Hey, what's going on? I hope you're doing well today. My name is Jay and in this video, I want to show you how you can use the data attribute using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It's actually pretty simple. I know it sounds complicated, but it's not. So for example, here I have a very simple a website that I created just displaying some events. So it's like a list of events. Um, if you take a look at the HTML here, let me um, scroll down a little bit. You can see we have one event here and another one here. It's just two uh, divs. And we have a data hyphen date and there's a date. And then we have another one that says data hyphen type. So you can have uh, multiple data attributes in your divs or elements. And what we want to do is use these data, for example, this date to actually hide or disable or do whatever you want for that specific element, depending on that data. Okay. So we're going to use some JavaScript to detect that, take it from that element, from this diff, and then add some CSS to make sure we can change it depending on the date. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So HTML is already done. Um, I have already some CSS to make sure it looks like this, but then our JavaScript file is empty. So let's go ahead and start creating some JavaScript here. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find all the events. So for example, these both, um, we only have two, but if you have more than two, that's fine. It's the same thing. So I'm going to create a variable. Let's do const, let's call it events. You can call this whatever you want. I'm going to do document query selector all it needs to be all because there's more than one. Okay. And this class is event. Um, just to make sure I'm going to go back to the HTML and is class of event. All right. So what I'm going to do is going to come to log events. So constantly log that variable that I just created just to make sure that we have both diffs. Okay. So let's, I'm going to save this. Let's reload the page and here you go. Let me zoom in a little bit here in the console. So we have a note list um, and you can see one diff and another diff. And you can see when I hover, I select both. So we are good. We have them both. All right. So now that we have that list, we can do a for each loop that way we can go through all the whole, the whole list, even if it's two or a hundred, and we can check for whatever we want inside that element. So let me show you. So you do events, which is the variable that we just created that has the list. We do for each, that's the loop. And here we need um, the element, which is every single one. And you can do a function. I'm going to do an arrow function just to stay more modern. You can do a regular function here. Let's console log that E. I want to show you what it is. Let's save it. Let's reload the page again. And here we go. So you can see now it's showing us the actual div, the HTML div here in the console. So now we have access to everything inside this div, right? Including the data, the data date or the type or whatever you want. We're going to focus on this data date. And it's actually pretty easy to access. So I'm going to show you here. Do E dot data set. All right. Let's save that. Let's reload the page. And here we go. So now we have one and two, which is like the first diff and the second diff. And we have date with this date and new hot type with concert. So if we go back to the HTML, you can see we have the data date and the data type. The one with the date and the one that says concert. Um, it's just this one is just showing you that you know, it's a concert, maybe something else, different type of event, and that's fine. So we have access to the date and the type. I want the date right now. I don't want to type. So we can go back to JavaScript and I can say dot date. Let's save it. Let's reload the page again. And here we go. Now we have the actual date for both. 
Okay, so now we need to kind of convert this to an actual date that the browser understand and JavaScript can get it, right? And we can compare, we can do whatever we want with that date. So what you can do is I'm gonna create a variable, let's call it date, and we can do new date. And inside here, we can add the actual date data. I'm just gonna copy and paste this, all right? So I'm just gonna remove this console and let's console now, whoops, let's console date. All right, let's save that. Let's see what happens now, reload. And now you go. So now you can see something different, right? It's a date, but it's now you can see the day, the month, the, the time, the year, everything. Now this is something that we can use with JavaScript. This is something that JavaScript understands, okay? So now that we have that, which is very, very important, I'm gonna create one that is um, just like today. Whatever today is in your computer, that's what's gonna be. So I can do, um, I don't know, today's date. You can put whatever you want and this one is gonna be just new date with nothing, okay? So if you console log, for example, today's date, just to make sure, let's save, reload. So this is today. So it's gonna just, because it's looping through um, this both um, elements, it's just showing us um, the actual today's date. And this is today, exactly today, the exact, the exact time and year, okay, which is great. So this changes depending, okay, so tomorrow is gonna be January 5th and go, you know, just like that. So now that we have those, we can compare. So I can say if the date of this element or any of this element is less than today, let's add a CSS class. So let's go ahead and do that. Just a simple if statement. So if the date is less than today's date, we can do E, which is the actual element, remember, class list, which is kind of getting all the CSS classes and I'm gonna add a new class and we can call it disable or it can, we can call it whatever you want. Maybe past, old, I don't know, actually it's disabled, whatever you want. Let's save that and see if that works. So let's go ahead and reload. All right, so let's take a look at the HTML. Let's open this a little bit. All right, we have both of, and you can see now here, we have this event and the, yep, is the 1st of January. Today is the 4th, the day I'm recording this video is the 4th of January, which means this is old. So there is a class of disabled and this one is the 8th, which is in the future and it doesn't have the class. Perfect, so that's what we want. So now what we can do is add some CSS and do whatever we want with that disabled. So I'm gonna go to the CSS. I'm gonna create a new one. Let me scroll a little bit here. I'm gonna do event.disabled. And I can do the opacity maybe 0 0.5, um, pointer event uh, none. That way you cannot click on it I'm like because we have buttons. So let's see if that works. Let's save it, reload, and here you go. I cannot click, you know. You can remove it, you can, I don't know, hide it. You can add um, event closed or, I mean, you can get very creative, but I just wanted to show you how simple it is to use the data attribute for your website, your web app, whatever you want with JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. And that's it.
Subscribe if you want to keep learning and click on the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye.